Okay, in this presentation, what I want to do is introduce those of you who are comfortable with vector addition into a to a simplified way of solving these projectile motion problems. And for those of you who are willing to try this out, I will say it's usually a quicker and easier way of solving these problems, um, but it's a non-traditional way. And so this is why I'm just offering it as an alternative. But uh, for many people, it actually turns out to be much easier, in fact, for me. Um, and so when we're thinking about 2D projectile motion, uh, there are two primary equations that we end up working with, and these both come from thinking about area under the curve and derivatives. Um, but let's just write them for the sake of being quickness here. Um, Vf is equal to V0 plus AT. So this is telling us how the velocity changes. And that delta X is equal to uh, V0 T plus one half AT squared. Okay. And I've taken pains here to write these as vector notations because what I want to do is think about what these uh, equations are really saying uh, in terms of vectors. So if we think about this top expression, what it's saying is that if you take a V naught vector, let's say it's moving, we we took some situation and we shot it at an angle, and we had a V naught vector. Then what this is saying is if you take that V naught vector and you add it, let's say we're only undergoing the force of gravity, and you add to it the acceleration vector, the sum of those two vectors gives you something, tells you about the final velocity vector. Okay, so in this, this, this picture I've drawn might represent something like throwing a ball from one person to another person, right? And so the, the uh, V naught here is represented right here, and the place where that Vf is taking place is right here at the place where the ball reaches the top of its path. Right? So with this basic expression, I can tell you if I know something about the time and, I, or, and or I know something about the angle that this ball was released with, using just basic trigonometry, the sine of this angle is going to be the AT over the hypotenuse. So if I know acceleration is due to gravity and I know the initial velocity, initial angle, I can find time immediately from this. I know that the cosine of this angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I can tell you what the velocity will be when it reaches the top of its path. Uh, or I can use the tangent and tell you opposite over adjacent. If I know the acceleration is due to gravity and I know what the final velocity is at the top of the path, I can get the time out of this. So it's a very quick way to solve this problem. Let me make this a little smaller. And the other expression here is telling us about the distance. So if I take what it's saying, it's saying, say you have that same initial velocity vector. And now I'm going to scale that vector by time. So scaling a vector by a scalar or taking a scalar and multiplying it by a vector doesn't change direction at all. The only thing it does is make it longer or shorter. So we'll make that initial velocity vector longer. Okay. Then it says you add the half at squared vector, add the half at squared vector, and what you get is the distance that was traveled over whatever time you put in there. Right? So if I go back to thinking about this situation, if I know that this was the initial velocity, and I know that uh, the time that it takes to reach the top of the path, then I can also tell you, just from this expression, this angle is the same, I can tell you both how high it was, that's this side of the equation, or how far it traveled. So delta x here will be this portion, and this side, delta h, will be this side. Right. So again, if I know the angle, cosine theta, here is delta x over v naught t. So if I know something about the initial velocity, 
and I can tell you something about the distance that I traveled. Sine theta is your half AT squared over your V naught T. So if this is acceleration due to gravity, then I can tell you something about the time. And tangent theta is equal to um, adjacent, uh, to, uh, opposite <laughs> over hypotenuse over adjacent delta x, right? But, and this tangent is particularly useful because many times what I am given is the height of something or the value of something. And I know that this is also equal to the height. So I can also say that the tangent of theta is the delta h over the delta x. So using this method can be a much faster way of solving complicated equations. Uh, you can also find the final velocity on the way down on the other side of this. So if I took this same scenario and I said, well, what would be the VF? Then I might say my initial velocity at the top of the path was V naught. And then I add to that AT. And what I get is your VF at the bottom of that path. I can also tell you how long it took if the person was taller than the other person in case this, this, value, this value changes on the other side. There's all sorts of things I can do with this. Um, so this is an alternative method for solving these kinds of problems. I probably won't talk about this very much in class um, because it is a non-traditional way, but it is a very useful way for solving problems. So what I'll try and do is I'll upload a couple of problems here that will use this version so you can see how you would apply it. And if you choose to use this version on solving your homework or your test problems, um, then uh, you might find yourself getting a lot done a lot more quickly than your counterparts.